Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our worship here tonight, a night we call Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday, short for the Latin, Mandatum Novum, which means a new, a new commandment, a new mandate that I give you. This was Jesus' commandment on the night he had his last meal with his disciples. The commandment that they were to show that they were his disciples. They were to do this by loving one another just as he had loved them. This is the distinction. This is the difference. This is the, uh, the characteristic that makes us Christians, that we would love one another as Jesus Christ would love us. And what is that love? That he would even give his life for us. We worship that magnificent and beautiful God. He's come to us in love, with grace, and with mercy. We worship him, him tonight with music, with prayer, even with a little bit of drama tonight. And so I just pray that you would be attentive, that you would participate fully with your minds and with your hearts, and listen to the gift that Jesus Christ has given to us. Listen to what it means to be called to be around his table. What love, what deep love that is. Do not take the table for granted. Do not please see the table as just some remnant of ages gone by, just a certain so much procedure. The table is significant. The table speaks without words the love of Jesus Christ See the table tonight and understand the action that Jesus Christ took for you and for me. Amen? Amen. Let's stand as God calls us in this place to give him worship tonight from John's Gospel. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I've loved you, you also should love one another. In worship, worship on this, on this day, day, we testify to God's love shown perfectly in Christ, and we recommit ourselves to love one another as a community of faith. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your amazing, divine, compassionate love. I pray, Lord, that you would come upon us now with your spirit in a full way. I pray that you would rest upon us, Lord. Uh, dwell in our hearts richly and open our eyes to see the beauty and the depth that only your love can give. Lord, I, I pray that for the people gathered here, you would touch us all with a special encounter. Lord, come, I pray. Bless us as we bless you. I pray it all in your precious son's name. All these people said, amen. I'd invite you to be seated and... Uh, Participate in song, uh, sing with your hearts full and your minds full as well.
creates us into something new. Jesus, surely you will find us. Surely our Messiah will make all things new. Will make all things new. My soul cries out. My soul cries out for you. These bones cry.
It was the Lord who spoke all things into creation. He breathed, and it was, and he knelt down as it were. And out of the dust he formed man, and he breathed life into him. He gave him purpose and meaning. And he made even out of us, even those made from dust, even those who are dark, he even makes us into beautiful things. This is the love and perfection and power of our God. And all his creation said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As his creation, we gather today, we come together, and uh, we even bow down our hearts and confess, knowing that uh, we've been made from the dust and that one day we will return to that dust. That was the call to us on Ash Wednesday. We recognize, we, we realize we have a limited time on this earth. We are mortal beings in our flesh, but our souls, our spirits, they live on. They live on. And it's in that life that we have been given that goes on that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ who's given us the ability, who's given us His righteousness that we can stand in the presence of the Creator, not just for a day, not even just for a thousand, but for 10,000 and 10,000 times that and even 10,000 more. And so we go to Him now and we bow our hearts, recognizing our mortality, recognizing our fallenness and our brokenness, knowing that He calls us to lay down our darkness and brokenness at his throne of grace and mercy. Hear from the psalmist today from Psalm 116. He says, I love the Lord. He's heard my voice. He's heard my cry for mercy because he's turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death, they strangled me. The anguish of the grave, it came upon me. I was overcome by trouble and by sorrow. But my strength is in the Lord, and I will lay down my sins at his feet. Let us do that now in the quiet of our own hearts. Lord, you are so good to us. So gracious. So, so merciful. Compassionate and kind and, and long-suffering. For even though we so oftentimes turn our backs to you, so often we turn away from you. We, we run. We deny you. Lord, we do it daily, even when we don't know it. And yet, you are always there, always calling, always waiting, always bidding. Come home. Be mine. Be renewed. Be refreshed. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace and for your love. And um, I'm astounded by it. I'm, I'm bowled over by it, Lord. I pray, Lord, tonight you would come with your spirit and bowl us over or let us feel the, the depth of your compassion and love Lord, I pray that we would see you for who you are even as we see ourselves for who we are Lord let us see let us see well let us see rightly let us see as you would have us see my friends I invite you to pray with me together as children of God. And we do pray, eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we have failed to fulfill your will for us. We betray our neighbors, desert our friends, and run in fear when we should be loyal. Though you have bound yourself to us, 
we have not bound ourselves to you. God, have mercy on us, weak and willful people. Lead us once again to your table and unite us to Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. To Christ be praise forever. Amen. And now, my friends, I want you to hear along with me this exceedingly good news from the apostle that, that Christ loved, from John. He says, we've seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and we rely on the love that God has for us, because God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God is in him. Know that by the grace and mercy of our God and by the power of the cross, your sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west. Know the power and the love of your God. All his people said, amen. Let's stand and respond to that good news.
please be seated and make your ears and minds and hearts ready to hear the word of God spoken to you this night. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are, to eat, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the uh, New Testament. Uh, it was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into the basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet, Jesus answered. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash, only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that, and that is why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I your Lord and teacher have washed your feet. You also should wash one another's feet. I have set 
you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's ruminate those things in our hearts as we listen to the choir give a response to those readings. Let us give joy in our hearts to what we've just heard.
during the last week of Jesus' life, the people of God were gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. The remembrance of God delivering them from the yoke of slavery under Pharaoh and taking them to the land of promise. Centuries earlier, on a night like this, God spoke to Moses, telling him to instruct all the people in the following way. Take the blood of an unblemished lamb and spread it on the sides and tops of the door frames of their houses. And when I come to pass judgment on Egypt and their gods, I will pass over each house that displays the blood of the lamb. In keeping with God's command to celebrate this festival as a lasting ordinance, Jesus and his disciples gathered to share the Passover meal. Peter, I Peter, I have something very important to share with you and all the others tonight at the meal. What is it, Lord? You've been sharing riddles with us and, and speaking in riddles all week. I don't understand. We all do not understand. Peter, how much more plainly can I speak? You've been with me three years now. You've heard my message. You've seen the power of my Father working through me. Peter, my Peter, it won't be long now. The time is coming. The hour is near. And all things are going to be fulfilled through me. You'll see. You'll see. Look, our friends are coming. And the disciples gathered together in the upper room of a house in Jerusalem, a room that had been prepared for them in advance. And Jesus led them in their celebration of Passover. My friends, I've eagerly waited and desired to share this Passover meal with you before I go on to suffer. I tell you, I will not eat this meal again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Hear him him speak words of God's kingdom and not understanding what was about to happen, the disciples were anxious and confused. Peter, what does the master mean by what he says? You know him best. Can you explain to me what he means? I don't know. I don't understand. All I know is that he speaks the truth. Tonight, I tell you all, my friends, on account of me, you will be scattered, you will flee, you will abandon me. It shall be as it was written, I will strike the shepherd and the flock will scatter. No, Lord, we will never abandon you, not even to death. I will never disown you. Indeed, all of you, each one of you, will abandon me. I say again, you will abandon me, even on this night. Judgment is coming. I tell you, judgment is coming. And my judgment upon you is this. I will love you. I will love you. That is my judgment upon you. I've come to this world not to judge, but to save it. My friends, see and understand, even now, what I do for you this night. See this. This is my body. And it's broken for all of you. Take and eat. My friends, this is the covenant in my blood shed for you for the 
forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do. And remember, see, and remember. My friends, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You'll look for me, but where I'm going, you cannot follow. Lord, where are you going? Where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but soon you will be able to. Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? You know the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know the Father. And indeed, you know him now because you've seen him. You've believed and you know me and you've seen him. Now, I say, brothers, remain in me and I will remain in you. I am the vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Know this and see this. As the Father has loved me, so too I love you. Love is no greater than this, that one would lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. You're my friends because everything I learned from my Father, I've taught to you, I've given to you. You've now seen him and now you know. You're my friends and I ask you, I charge you to go and bear fruit. Go into this world and answer the call that our Father has put upon us. You did not choose me. I chose you, and now I've appointed you to go and bear fruit. Know that I do all these things tonight to glorify my Father. Obey all that I've taught you. If my words remain in you, you ask whatever you wish, and it will be granted to you. And what I mean by that is this, that it's to my Father's glory that you all bear much fruit. And when you do this, you show yourselves to be my disciples. Know that my body and by my blood comes the forgiveness of sins, the abundance of a life that bears fruit. Know that there's life everlasting if you but remain in me. And so when you do these things, see them and remember and do. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. My friends, hear the words that our Savior spoke tonight. Hear them and know that they weren't just for a season. They weren't just for the 12. They were for all of us. And so as you come to the table, see and remember and know and do. I invite you now to come to the table of the Lord. Partake with him side by side and be blessed. Be blessed. the sick and the homeless and the hungry. He saw me lost and without hope. And moved with compassion, he sent out his only son.
presence, in the presence of holiness. But just as I turn to go, the gate swung open wide, and the king and his only son they invited me inside this is your invitation come just the way you are come find what your soul has been Having loved his own who were in the world, Jesus now showed them the full extent of his love. 
Lord, will you wash my feet? Peter, you don't realize what I'm doing for you right now, but soon you'll understand. No, you will not wash my feet. Peter, unless I wash you, you could have no part with me. Well, Lord, if you wash my feet, then my body and my head as well. Peter, you've already been washed. You've been washed in me. A man who's taken a bath only needs to wash his feet. Know what I mean. Know all of you what I mean when I say this. If you're in me, you're already clean. But wash, even daily, the dirt that comes to you daily. Wash yourselves and renew your minds by the word that's been given to you. Put new things into your minds and hearts and be renewed day by day, moment by moment. I've come to this place not simply and only for your salvation. I've come to glorify the Father. Now be glorified by bearing fruit. You can only bear fruit by remaining in me and by renewing your minds, by supping on the word of God. Do you know what I've done for you, said Jesus? You call me teacher, you call me Lord, and rightfully so, because that is what I am. As if your Lord and your teacher would wash your feet, what shall you do? What shall you do? Tonight, I tell you indeed, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your love knows no bounds. Your grace overflows and has no limits. Father, thank you so much for your love to us. 
Thank you so much for showing us the way. Father, I pray for this congregation, for this community, that we would not fall under the spell of cheap grace and simply think we can say the sinner's prayer and go about our ways as if nothing is different. Lord, you change everything. Come and change your people. Come and waken us from our slumber. Lord, show us your ways. Help us to learn and be obedient and to truly love without filters, without judging, without all the darkness that we have. Lord, free us from it all. Unclutch our fists and let all the things of career and money and addiction, let it all just drop away. We would have our arms and hands open and ready to receive you, Lord, and then to be changed, to be different, and to show your love to a world that needs you. They don't need my theology. They don't need my opinions, Lord. They don't need my politics. This world needs you. Show yourself to the world. Use us. Make us ready. Bend us and make us your vessels in this world. Lord, make it be so. I pray it all in Jesus' precious name. And all his people said, amen. We come now giving our offerings to the Lord, blessing him as he blesses us. You were near, though I was distant, disillusioned, I was lost and insecure. Still merciful for my attention, you were waiting at the door, and I let you in.
Heavenly Father, we rest now in the light of that beautiful exchange you made for righteousness and justice, meet mercy and grace at the center of the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that tonight you would go with us in the fullness of your Spirit. Lord, give us rest this evening. Prepare our hearts to come and worship you tomorrow as we remember that, that dark night, that dark day, that was the prelude to the greatest day. Lord, let us not forget the price that was paid, the great price that was paid, we were bought at a price, the price of Jesus Christ, our all in all. Lord, go with us now into the night and bless us and bring us